According to statistics, in 2023, China saw the closure of 10,900 companies related to semiconductor manufacturing, with an average of 31 such companies deregistering or having their business licenses revoked each day. Compared to the 5,746 companies in 2022, this marks a substantial increase. Over the past five years, the number of semiconductor-related enterprises being shut down or deregistered in China has surpassed 22,000. Explaining the reason behind the closure of numerous semiconductor-related companies, a man stated, "It's simply because of the shortage of semiconductors. Many of these companies jumped on the bandwagon and later found out it's much more difficult than they thought. Besides having money, you also need technical personnel and equipment." So unable to make a profit, they withdrew from the market. Furthermore, reports indicate that apart from the delisted companies, major players in the semiconductor industry are also finding survival increasingly challenging. On February 6, 2024, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation (SMIC), the leading semiconductor foundry in mainland China. Announced its financial report for the full year of 2023, showing a net profit attributable to shareholders of 4.8 billion yuan, a decrease of 60 percent compared to the previous year. In the fourth quarter alone, its net profit was only 174.7 million U.S. dollars, a decrease of 55 percent compared to the same period in 2023. On the evening of January 30th, 2024, Cambrian, an artificial intelligence company in Beijing, also released its annual performance forecast for 2023, indicating a projected operating income of 680 million yuan to 720 million yuan, approximately 94 to 100 million U.S. dollars, slightly lower than the same period in 2022. Although Cambrian's losses have decreased compared to previous periods, its revenue still cannot catch up with the losses. Moreover, this marks the first year of declining operating income since the company was founded seven years ago, and it's also the seventh consecutive year of losses. Recently, Giga Device, a Chinese semiconductor giant, also announced a significant drop in profits for 2023. According to the disclosed 2023 annual performance forecast, the company expects to achieve an operating income of approximately 5.77 billion yuan, about 800 million U.S. dollars, a decrease of about 2.4 billion yuan, about 330 million dollars, compared to the same period in 2022, a year-on-year decrease of around 29%. In addition, the net profit in the third quarter plummeted significantly compared to the previous year and the previous quarter, even reaching the lowest level of profit in 2023. Furthermore, compared to the fiscal years 2021 and 2022, Giga Device expects a net profit attributable to the parent company of only about 155 million yuan, about 21 million U.S. dollars, in 2023. A year-on-year decrease of 92 percent, indicating a cliff-like decline. Giga Device is a Chinese fabless semiconductor supplier specializing in IC design, research and development, applications and sales, outsourcing wafer manufacturing to professional foundries. The company was founded in April 2005 and is headquartered in Beijing. Its main business includes the development, technical support, and sales of memory, microcontrollers, and sensors, which are widely used in various fields such as industrial, consumer electronics, automotive, Internet of Things, computing, mobile applications, as well as network and telecommunications industries. Regarding the main reasons for the decline in performance in 2023, Giga Device believes it was affected by economic factors and that the semiconductor industry it operates in still faces severe challenges. In September 2023, Reuters reported that the Chinese Communist Party (CCP) would launch three-phase funding supported by the state, raising 300 billion yuan, approximately 41.7 billion U.S. dollars, to support its semiconductor industry. However, the first two phases of the fund investment ended up in failure, with little progress for China's semiconductor industry. The National Big Fund was announced by the CCP's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology in 2014, focusing on semiconductor design, packaging testing, equipment, and materials. Its supporters include the Ministry of Finance, China Development Bank Capital Corporation Limited, China National Tobacco Corporation, China Telecommunications Corporation, and other financially strong state-owned entities. 
but China's semiconductor industry still struggles to play a dominant role in the global supply chain, especially in advanced semiconductors. Despite the massive subsidies, there have been huge losses and a series of bankruptcies, defaults, and unfinished projects. The reasons are thought-provoking. First, there were issues with fund management. Huashin Investment was the sole manager of the first two phases of the big fund. Since 2021, several Huashin senior officials and former officials have been investigated in the CCP's anti-corruption campaign, including the former CEO of the big fund, Lu Jun, the former general manager, Ding Wenwu, the minister of the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, Xiao Yaqing, and the former chairman of Xinhua Unigroup, Zhao Weiguo, as well as the co-CEOs. Next is the misuse of semiconductor research funds. An article from a Chinese media outlet reported that over the past few years, only about 40% of China's research funds have been genuinely used for scientific research, while the remaining 60% have been used for meetings. This is because expenses for meetings can include reimbursement for travel and fuel, and some people often use business trips or inspection trips abroad as excuses to exceed budgets. However, these so-called inspection trips are mainly for sightseeing, with most of the time spent on tourism or expenses unrelated to the project, such as entertainment, foot baths, and property fees. Apart from meetings, Chinese research institutions are fond of purchasing equipment. The article states that every year when funds are allocated, the first thing done is to update all the resources in the team, such as notebooks, scanners, and mobile phones. In short, the lure of capital outweighs the commitment to genuine scientific research. Jia Ye Liang, currently based in the United States, told Radio Free Asia, Fraud in China's semiconductor industry to obtain national research funding is a widespread and escalating phenomenon. James A. Lewis, director of the Technology and Public Policy Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, also pointed out that China's semiconductor industry faces two major problems, corruption, which is inherent in the Chinese economy itself, and the suppression of high-tech companies by the Chinese authorities. Between accelerating the development of industries like semiconductors and strengthening its authoritarian rule, Beijing has chosen the latter. Furthermore, insiders revealed that the aftermath of the three-year zero-COVID policy has plunged Beijing into serious financial crisis. Consequently, Chinese authorities have had to halt massive investments in the domestic semiconductor industry. With the absence of support from tech giants and government funding, companies like GigaDevice find themselves in a difficult situation. However, some economists point out that the real obstacle comes from U.S. sanctions. Since the enforcement of the semiconductor ban by the United States on October 12, 2022, China's semiconductor industry has been on a continuous decline. In October 2022, the U.S. government issued new regulations on semiconductors, expanding the ban on exporting high-end chips and process equipment to China from below 10 nanometers to below 14 nanometers. The lower the nanometer, the more high-end the chip. This indicates high-performance computing chips involving AI and supercomputers, as well as NAND flash memory technology with more than 128 layers, which does not require power to retain data. Additionally, the U.S. government issued a killer blow by prohibiting U.S. technical personnel, including U.S. citizens, permanent resident green card holders, or legal entities established under U.S. law from assisting China in developing or producing high-end semiconductors without U.S. permission. Since the enforcement of this ban on October 12th, according to reports from Chinese government media, such as Science and Technology Daily, American engineering personnel, including those from Applied Materials, KLA Corporation, LAM Research, and Tokyo Electron, have gradually withdrawn from Chinese semiconductor factories. According to an investigation by the Wall Street Journal, on October 16th, at least 43 American executives hold core positions in 16 Chinese-listed semiconductor companies, such as CEOs or vice presidents. However, after the announcement of the ban, these individuals were all caught in a dilemma of choosing between working in China or running afoul of U.S. sanctions. This includes Gerald Yin, founder of Advanced Micro, and six executives as well as Cheng Xinglong, executive director of King Semi Company Limited. According to the investigation, these individuals are all U.S. citizens or hold U.S. green cards. 
Similarly, Beijing Giga Device Technology Company's Xu Qingming, the company's vice chairman, and Cheng Taiyi, the director, submitted their resignations for so-called personal reasons. This U.S. ban undoubtedly dealt a severe blow to the development of China's semiconductor industry. According to the Wall Street Journal, the price of storage chips in China has dropped significantly in the following year, and the downward trend is expected to continue. An employee of a major U.S. semiconductor manufacturer based in Taipei, who declined to be named, told Voice of America that due to policy risks, the major factory where he works has significantly reduced its exports to China since 2021, especially in supplying laptop chips to Chinese companies like Huawei and Xiaomi. Regarding the increased U.S. ban on semiconductor exports to China, some analysts have said that this pushes China into an existential crisis from the perspective of sales, manufacturing, technology, and talent. They say that in recent years, the U.S. blockade of China's semiconductor industry has expanded from targeted sanctions against Huawei to comprehensive suppression. The Financial Times even said that the U.S. aim is to bring China's semiconductor industry back to the Stone Age. This assertion was quickly confirmed. In October 2023, the U.S. further strengthens export controls on advanced semiconductors and semiconductor manufacturing tools to China. The latest customs data shows that affected by the ban, China's imports of integrated circuits decreased by 15.4 percent year-on-year in 2023 to 349.4 billion U.S. dollars, and exports also decreased by 10.8 percent. This is the largest decline since China Customs started recording data in 2004. Even worse, under the double blow of CCP policy shocks and U.S. sanctions, China's semiconductor shortage has become severe, leading to a rapid expansion of the gray market for semiconductors, making competition fiercer and reducing sales prices and profit margins. The gray market refers to the market channels through which brand name products are sold without the authorization of the trademark owner. According to investigations, gray market transactions for semiconductors mainly occur online in WeChat groups and emails, but sometimes also in physical markets like Shenzhen SEG Electronics Market and Hua Changbei, known as Shenzhen's Electronic Street. However, Taiwanese financial expert Huang Shicheng warns that China has developed many semiconductor companies, but they simply do not have the time to undergo certification, as the certification process takes three to five years. As a result, they are forced to produce aggressively, and eventually, these semiconductors end up flowing onto the black market, becoming a source of unscrupulous products. Huang Shicheng also points out that such uncertified or unidentified semiconductors, if used in the automotive market, can be extremely dangerous. This is because automotive semiconductors generally require lengthy safety certification processes, and if semiconductors of unknown origin are installed directly, it could compromise the safety of the entire terminal. In light of these developments, many are concerned: Can China's semiconductor industry rise again under such multiple pressures, or will it remain in a slump? Li Chengdong, a technology industry analyst based in Beijing and founder of the High Twin Think Tank, said in a media interview that the negative impact of the increased U.S. semiconductor ban on China is significant, given China's weak foundations in semiconductor manufacturing. Losing any link in the short term, even with Chinese investment, may not yield results. This is especially true for downstream applications of semiconductors such as smartphones, AI, and smart driving. Dan Chamorro, head of global risk and intelligence at Control Risks, a business consulting firm in Washington D.C., also pointed out that restricting Chinese companies' access to U.S. talent is equivalent to a direct blow to China's attempts to upgrade its semiconductor technology chain. Without talent, technology cannot exist. At the same time, other professionals have noted that although China is striving to break through U.S. sanctions and seek self-reliance, the complexity of the semiconductor technology industry and the comprehensiveness of the U.S. sanctions will make it difficult for China to break through. Stephen Azell, director of global innovation policy at Information Technology and Innovation Foundation (ITIF), cited the example of solar voltaic technology. China provided 42 billion U.S. dollars in subsidies to solar panel manufacturers between 2012 and 2013, which catapulted China's share of global photovoltaic production to over 60 percent in 2013. Although China attempted to apply this model to the semiconductor field, it clearly did not achieve the same results. 
Azell explained that this is because semiconductor technology is orders of magnitude more complex than photovoltaic products, and the complexity of semiconductor manufacturing and equipment manufacturing requires a global value chain consisting of professional suppliers to complete the three most important stages of the semiconductor industry chain research and design, manufacturing, and assembly testing packaging. It is worth noting that the development and maturation of suppliers alone takes decades. Therefore, Azell frankly believes that over time, the efforts of the U.S. government, in conjunction with allied countries like Japan, to restrict and control the export of critical, highly advanced semiconductor manufacturing technology to China may prove effective. Furthermore, some analysts have indicated that in the year 2024, China's semiconductor industry will become even bleaker. Around August 2023, Huawei was exposed by the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association for vigorously creating a secret semiconductor manufacturing network after receiving approximately 30 billion U.S. dollars in state funds from the Chinese government, including purchasing semiconductor equipment and products under the name of third-party factories. Analysts pointed out that Huawei, controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, attempted to circumvent Western sanctions again. According to internal documents obtained by Bloomberg, Huawei has acquired two existing factories and has at least three under construction. On October 17, 2023, the U.S. government issued a statement saying that to prevent the CCP from acquiring cutting-edge U.S. technology and to strengthen the expansion of China's military power, the U.S. plans to stop exporting NVIDIA-designed super-advanced artificial intelligence chips to China, signaling a new round of sanctions on Chinese semiconductors by the U.S. In January 2023, the Netherlands, Japan, and the U.S. reached an agreement to jointly impose restrictions on semiconductor exports to China. Earlier this year, the Netherlands blocked the export of some deep ultraviolet lithography machines from ASML, a semiconductor equipment manufacturer. It is understood that lithography machines are crucial equipment for manufacturing advanced semiconductors. As leading manufacturing countries of advanced semiconductor equipment, these three countries joining forces to impose sanctions may exacerbate the impact on China's semiconductor industry. Ching Peng, a political and economic commentator based in the U.S., pointed out that the trend of the international community restricting China's semiconductor development is irreversible. The joint sanctions by these three countries constitute a key point in blocking China's semiconductor development. Chris Miller, author of Chip War and professor at Tufts University in the United States, also stated that the Netherlands' actions indicate that, in addition to the U.S. government, the Dutch government will continue to strengthen restrictions on semiconductor manufacturing equipment and advanced semiconductors. Miller also emphasized that the U.S. government has signaled its intention to introduce new export control measures to regularly plug loopholes. Daniel Newman, chief analyst at Futurum's strategic research and analysis firm focusing on technology, digital innovation, and market disruption, also pointed out that with the U.S. election approaching and tensions remaining high in the Taiwan Strait, it is difficult to imagine any significant relaxation. If there is any change, it may be the further tightening of sanctions. 